Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at a neat little feature that allows you to use these arrow buttons here to select either a measure that you want to display on this um, bar chart here. So I can change it to count or I can change it to hours and then you can minimize that or you can select the actual category you want to display so I might want to change this to work type and then minimize that okay so that'll be the topic of today's video okay so let's crack on we're going to use a combination of three features of Power BI to create this effect here. So the first feature we're going to use is called field parameters. And those field parameters are going to allow us to toggle between the different measures that are displayed on here. Okay, I've got two, but you can put as many as you need or as many as you want. And it's going to do the same for the category. So I'm going to explain how to set up the field parameters. The second feature is going to be bookmarks. Now the bookmarks are going to be what allows us to show and hide this slicer here. And the third feature is going to be to use some docs to actually construct a, a title for the chart based on whichever one of these we select. So if I change this to back to priority, we can see that this is work order hours by priority and I'll minimize that. And if I change this to count, we can see this is work order count by priority. So it creates a dynamic chart, a dynamic title as well. Okay, so before we get started, if you're finding this channel for the first time and you want to keep up to date with the latest videos that I release, and I tend to release one more or less every week, then remember to click the subscribe button and press the wee bell and you'll get a notification whenever I publish a new video. So enough of that, and now it's time to crack on and start building this feature. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set up the field parameters. So I've created a duplicate of the home page here just so I can show you how to set up the field parameters and what they look like. And um, to insert one, you go to modeling, you go to new parameter and you go to fields. Okay, so what the field parameter does is it allows you to define a parameter that you can add to a, a visualization. And behind that parameter it can be a list of measures or a list of categories or you know, columns. So let's start off with this one here, which is going to be for the measures. So we'll call this Batlog Measures. Okay, so that's the name of it. Now, what you can do is you can add and order the fields in this selection here. So I'm going to go to our work order data and I'm going to add in the Batlog count and I'm going to add in the Batlog hours. Okay, so this is going to be two measures and that's going to be the measures that I'm going to tie to this button if you remember that the site here that's going to let us toggle between showing the backlog hours and the backlog count for this particular chart. I'm going to keep this add slicer to page because we do want a slicer and then I'm going to go and create that. Okay so that has created a new table and if we just go and open this up. So this table here is has been added into the, the data model and it's basically got the two measures that we added in. It uses this name of function here. Now, I'm not going to go into this in too much detail in this particular video, just just glance across the top of it really because I, I, I want to combine the three aspects together that I talked about earlier. And it's also got an, an, a sort order here. Okay, so you can actually assign a number here to change the order that these appear in. So that is um, that is pretty much has created the, the first field parameter. So to use that field parameter, what we need to do is we need to go into this visualization and at the moment we've got the backlog count. Now we then replace that measure with this backlog measures um, column that was created here. Okay, so let's go and pull it into here and give it the backlog count. And now what we can see is, if we click on this one here, we can see the backlog count. And if we click on this one here, we can see the backlog hours. Okay, so it's 10, 10.9K there and that one is 233 so it's clearly switching between the two now there's a few considerations here the first one is that you can actually select both of them and display both of these now this is a, a column chart so it's stack these two together now this consideration just re really quickly i'm going to create another video on this to explain in, in a bit more detail but you can see the order the magnitude of these measures is 
is vastly different. Okay, a count of work orders is like 233, the hours is 10.9k. So you do need to be careful if you are going to use the option to select both of these. And the same is, is possible for the um, the categories here as well. Now in our example, we just want to be able to select one. So I'm just going to go and go into the slicer settings, go to selection, single selection is going to be switched on. Okay, so I just want to be able to toggle between the two of these in this example here. Now, the second issue we've got with this is that this slicer looks very much like any other slicer you would generate. In fact, it is. However, this doesn't actually slice the data. What it does is it um, it toggles the data. Okay, so it looks like the, the looks like and acts like a normal slicer, but the end result is a toggling of the data, not a, a filtering of the data. So that is why I like these little buttons that I'm going to create because it clearly differentiates between the, the slicer that's going to be used to actually go and impact the, the visual and the slicers that you might want to put on a, a Power BI report that's going to filter the data. Um, now the other thing as well is that you might not have a real estate to actually add this slicer in. Now if you're going to, for, for the, the fuel parameter, now normally that isn't an issue because you've got this panel here. Now at the moment it doesn't let you add in field parameter slicers into here because they're visualizations. Now these filters, you can actually add filters into here and if you are stuck for real estate, you can actually um, use this here and you don't need to encroach on the actual visualization itself if there's not enough space and you don't want there to be filters there. So what we're going to do is yeah, add in these little buttons and um, and show you how that works. So I'm going to go and add a field parameter for the category and then we'll get back and start moving on to step number two. Okay, so I've created a couple of slicers here um, using the field parameters for the backlog category and the backlog measures. So this is back on the, the, the main report here. Now I'm going to go and do a little bit of configuration of these because I want them to be a lot smaller than this. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to remove the title and I'm going to make the text slightly smaller so that it can fit nicely onto this, this chart here. So next we're going to go and set up the bookmarks. So to do that, we need to add in some images to represent these buttons. So I've downloaded some of these images. I've got a left and a right and an up and a down. So let's look at this one here. So we want to basically show the close image here. Uh, we'll make it a lot smaller. Okay. And um, we're going to put that there because basically what we want to do is create a bookmark here which is going to have this button here and it's going to, when we click on here, it's going to hide this and change this to the open button. And we'll do the the same with this one here. Now that's going to be the down button. And we'll stick out here. Now I don't have an access here or here, but it's not going to make any difference. You can just work around it. Okay, so that's that button there. Okay, now I've made it grey just to make it slightly, slightly subtle so that um, it's not too obvious but it's there so that you can actually see that there is a button there. So we'll move this down a little bit here and we'll move that to there. So now we're going to go and create two bookmarks. So to record the bookmarks or to create the bookmarks we need to go to view and we need the bookmarks um, panel shown and we need the selection panel shown. Okay so here are our two images so let's go and rename them. So that one is uh, category close and we'll call this one measure close. Okay and then we will deal with this one here. So let's select these two. Let's just select, we'll move that to there and move that to there just to, to play about with it, keep them, keep them together. And then um, we'll select both of these and we'll work with, so hold down control and make sure we've got both these selected. Okay, we'll deal with that one first. So let's show, a, a, or let's create a bookmark that's going to show these. Okay, so the bookmark is going to basically show these values here, these two, um, this image and this slicer here. So add category, category select shown. Okay. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to data. Now we don't want to bookmark the data and we only want to bookmark these two visuals here and then I'll update that. Okay. Now the next one is going to be these to here and I'm going to add a bookmark and we'll call this measure select shown. I'll go in here and again I don't want the data I only want the current selection these two here 
and then I'm going to update that. Okay, so just see if that's working. So if I hide these manually and then click on that, that's going to show them. Perfect. And if I hide these and then click on show measure, it's going to show those. Excellent. So the next thing is to add uh, another button here, which is pointing in the opposite direction, and that's going to be used to close or to open the menu. Okay, so I've added in another button here, and I've just overlaid it on top of the, the close button just now, um, and it's the open button. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and um, I've added it in, I've changed the name there, and I'm going to go and hide these two here. Oh, wrong two. It's a measured open, so I'll move it down here. I'm going to hide this and hide that, and we're just going to leave this button here. And I am going to go and create a new bookmark, and we'll call this Measure Select Hidden. Okay, now what we're interested in here is these two here. And I'm going to go in and Measure Open, Measure Close, Measure Select, the data that we're not interested in, and Selected Visuals, and then Update. Okay, so now we should be able to make sure that that, ah, that's shown both in there. Okay, so what I need to do now is click back on here and hide that measure open. So measure select shown, we don't want to see the open, so I'm going to click on here, make sure we've got the three of them selected, and then I'm going to update that one there. Okay, that's better now. So let's just toggle them between the two of them. And I'll do the same for the category as well. Okay, so that is us now set up our bookmarks. Now we need to add some actions to these buttons to actually activate these bookmarks. So I'm gonna select on this one first. I'm gonna get rid of these. Don't need these at the moment. And I'm gonna go into this action here. And for this image, I'm gonna switch it on. And what I want to do is select a bookmark. And the bookmark I want to select is to is measure selection shown. Okay, so when I press this button here, it's going to activate the bookmark called measure selection shown. Um, right, and then what I'm going to do is test that by holding down control and then click on here. Okay, so that's that's working fine. Now while that bookmark is open, I'm going to select this, this image here and I'm going to switch on the action and I'm going to go bookmark and I'm going to say measure select hidden. And then we'll go back across here and we can see that that is now working nicely between these two. And then I'll do the same for this category at the bottom as well. Okay, so I've allocated that to these the bookmarks to each of these buttons. So that button there will show as a bookmark to show it and this button here is a bookmark to hide it. Right, so let's test this now. So I'm going to go into this one here, I'm going to change it to hours. We can see that's all changed to hours. And I'm going to go and change that to work type. And we can see that that's changed to work type. We can see CM, PM across the top here. And I'm going to hide these. And then, um, yeah, it, it works. It works really well. The final piece here is just to add a little tooltip. So let's go to in here and type in tooltip, action tooltip. And then we'll go show category selection. So if I go in here now, we can see that that says show category selection. And you can do the same for the other, other images as well. I'll go and pause the video and do that. Okay, so I've just added those bookmarks in. So we can see hide measure selection. And then we activate that. And it says show measure selection. And the same for this one here. Right, now we need to look at this title here. So let's go in and we'll put in a dynamic title. Okay, so I'm just going to talk you through the logic that I'm using here to construct a title that's going to be um, dynamically generated for this, this chart here. The first thing I'm going to do, I've got a couple of variables here, um, or a few variables here. The first one is to pick up the measure sort order that um, corresponds to the, the actual measure that's selected here. Okay, so if I go back in, this is selected, this is ours at the moment. So if I go back in this table here for the measure, it's going to see this is hours here, and it's going to pick up this is measure number. This sort order is number one. Okay, so there's zero and one there. So that's going to be the sort order. We're going to use that to be able to reconcile the sort order with a, a description, hours or count. 
And then we're going to do the same for the for the category. And then we're going to just put in some base text here, which is going to be just the, the, the string work order. And then we're going to go and get the measure text. So I'm going to use a, a switch statement, true. So whichever one of these is true, it selects it first. So if the measure sort order is zero, then the word's going to be count here. Okay. And that's going to then be appended to this work order um, base text. Um, if it's if this sort order here that's that's been harvested up here with a select value is a number one, then we're going to use the text string hours. And then under category text, we're going to do a similar thing. And if it's zero, it's going to be work priority. One, it's going to be work type. Two, it's going to be condition for work. And then we're going to go and concatenate them all together. Base text, which is work order, plus whatever the measure text was. So work order count or work order hours by, and then the category here, which is either work priority, work type, or condition for work. So let's see that in action. So I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to click back on this chart, go to the format options, go under general, and in the title, I'm going to go to this FX button here. And then in the field value, I'm going to find my measure that I just created there. Text, backlog, chart title, click OK. Um, we can see that this has picked up work order hours by work priority, which is what we have here. Now, if I change this to count, work order count by work priority. And then if I change this to work type, work order count by work type. Okay, so it's all seems to be work order count by condition for work. So it all seems to be working. Um, working fine. So a bit of a longer video there. We're, we're combining a, a few of the different features in um, in Power BI that are available. Field parameters, which has just been re added recently. We've got bookmarks and we've got dynamic um, chart title using a bit of DAX. Um, all coming together to give us this little bit of functionality here where we can show and hide the selection options for the category and for the measures that are displayed in the chart. So hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you've got some ideas and it's got your creative juices flowing. And if it has and you've, um, you want to give the video a thumbs up, that's always appreciated. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, I tend to release one every week, then just hit the subscribe button and press the wee bell to keep notified. Apart from that, thanks for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.